Harleys are no fun to move. Hi everyone, Kirk here with Kirk's Motor Rod Shop, Crystal Lake, Illinois. Why did I push this bike up on the lift? Well, as you might be able to guess, it didn't start. It's not going to start. There's no battery in it. And instead of just putting a battery in it and trying to get it to start, this one, I am going to do some work to it first before I ever try to start it. So this bike has not been ridden in, I believe, three years, maybe four. Um, I actually purchased this bike. And I purchased this bike with the intent of getting it all fixed up and selling it, hopefully, to one of you fine viewers out there. So this is a 2003 K1200 LT. You can see it's in... You know, just based on the video right now, it's it's a little dirty, but it's in pretty decent shape. It's been kept inside the garage. This gentleman uh, contacted me last year in the fall and asked me if I would be interested in purchasing his bike. Shot me a price. I agreed. So pretty much bought it sight unseen and went out. I uh, had to travel about an hour and a half to go get it. Trailered it back here. Yeah, I'm going to get this thing up and running I know it's gonna run it's not really a question of if it's just a question of when when I put a battery in it and at least change out the fuel because I know that that fuel has definitely spoiled after sitting in there for years and hopefully when I take off the gas tank and have a look inside I find that it is not completely corroded to worthlessness like so many of these other bikes that have uh, that that's happened to unfortunately anyway just kind of giving it an overall look here the bike currently has I don't know if you can see it yeah I guess it's got, got some wires here 54,122 miles on it so very very decent miles not uh, not anything hard uh, the, the guy said that he and his wife would pretty much just travel on the bike. They would, uh, you know, go across country, and that's what these bikes are meant for. They are made for the long haul. So, I can see right now it's got my most hated tire on there. It's got the uh, ME880. That is going to be changed for certain. I can just already see. Now, I have not inspected this bike at all. Uh, I pulled it off the trailer, I parked it behind my trailer, and then I threw a cover on it, and now it's time to actually have a look and see all that there is to see on this thing. So let's uh, pop it up in the air here. I don't hit anything. Oh, looking good. And I'm going to grab a flashlight so I can start at least giving it a little bit of a general inspection here. So we got uh, some PL lights up in the front. That thing looks like it's uh, maybe leaked a little bit, but we'll certainly check that out. Um, one thing I noticed when it was sitting up on the center stand was the distance between here is, is just not enough. So it's going to get a set of springs. Might even get a shock. I don't know. That shock actually it looks a little little wet but I'm gonna when I take that out of there I will inspect it and see what is what eh, typical amount of garbage down underneath nothing serious there of course it'll have all the fluids changed everything is going to be done on this bike it's just going to be ready to go if it, and some of you guys have probably already noticed it needs brake lines very nice that it actually has a, a replaced brake rotor already that's that's cool I like that uh, let's have a look underneath see if I'm gonna be in anything serious here uh, I don't know maybe I don't know can't really tell right now it looks a little wet down here but uh, you know these things do leak after a while they they certainly do I asked the guy if he had done anything to it, and he said other than maintenance, no, he just really didn't need to. So I'll be going through the book to see if there were any 
records, things like that. But so far, everything looks pretty good. It's got some very minor scuffing right here on the on the tip over wing. Looks like it, uh, like so many of these bikes, it decided to take a nap. It's not bent at all. That's fine. Oh, that is that is way too loose. Oh boy, yeah, that that has to get serviced. That guys, if you're if you got this much play in your shifter, you got to go in there and and fix the linkage. Go in there and service that linkage. My gosh, that is that's pretty rough. Um, oh, he's got the this thing's hanging out. Normally, I I this is the the clutch bleeder. I usually take this bleeder and I route it so it comes out right behind the foot peg and that's a good spot for that because that way you don't have to remove anything and you don't have to leave it hanging out either yeah it's got some some of the cables here hanging out uh, he probably didn't do that maybe the last guy that serviced it did anyway that's just kind of an overall uh, if you if during the course of this video that you're you're curious as to about uh, this bike and you would like to maybe purchase this bike by all means do hit me up at kirksmotorrod.com and we will talk about pricing we'll talk about all that i really don't know what i'm going to price this bike at yet because i to be honest i don't know how much money i'm going to have invested in it if i've got a ton of money in it then it's going to be priced accordingly if i don't at, in the end well again it'll be priced accordingly i'm not uh not looking to retire on this one it's not how i make all my money i guess i make my money by the generous uh people out there who want to help not only support the work that i do but also bring me bikes to work on that's uh that's how i make my money so I'm going to put this camera down and start pulling the covers off and I will bring it back and uh, with any significant findings I find on this thing. So let's get after it. Kill the robot. Something I have noticed is one it's missing a lot of screws and so many of them are are jacked up look at this thing it's all it, it's it's half out it's kind of bent over same with that one this one's loose that bolt look at that bolt that that isn't even a little bit in there right things are just they're not tightened down or they're over tightened Oh, parts are just falling out too. So it'll all be right before it leaves my shop. I can guarantee you that. But it's just a, a quick note of some of these things. Apparently it has a CB radio. I, I don't think that's going to stay here. I'm going to get rid of that. Who uses these anymore? You know, this stuff is just old old tech but that'll be later in this video not right now looks like it's got a, a gremlin bell so there's that okay ready for this let's let's have a sniff oh yeah well that might have about 40 octane that's not completely shot, but it is bad enough that I would not dare start the bike on that because, well, it's just not going to run worth a damn. So, yeah, that's going to get drained out. You guys have one of those? Got one of these little shaker tubes? Got a little glass ball in the bottom of it. You just put it down in the tank, you shake it around, and it uh, draws it right out. If you don't have one of these and you want one of these you can find it on my amazon page they're pretty cheap i think they're i don't know 12 14 bucks they're they're not bad at all worth every penny but let me get the gas out of here
be out. See what it looks like. From here, it doesn't look too bad. It's gonna get probably probably will get a new one, but I don't know. Maybe it was just changed. Come on. Hard to do this stuff with one hand, that is for sure. Oh. That actually looks uh, pretty new. Well, if this were my bike, and at the moment it is my bike, this would not get changed. There's no reason to. So that will be some money savings right there. Yeah, I would say this thing's got at least another 12,000 on it, if not more. No, nope, that's going back in. I will be changing the fuel filter, no matter what. That one, with how smelly that gas is, no way is that going to stay in there. Let's have a look at the fuel pump. See what's going on with that, if anything at all. Anyways, let's just check it out though. Hopefully the fuel pump is just fine. There's no corrosion in here. That's the biggest thing I'm worried about is there being corrosion from uh, you know, if the, if the owner used uh, ethanol fuel. That definitely can cause problems over the years uh, if it's left in there without changing it up, refreshing the fuel every once in a while. It's got an aftermarket uh, fuel thing on here. That's his. It's not. I'm not saying it's a wrong one. It might be a Napa or something. Yeah, Napa Gold. That's a good filter. But oof, boy, this stuff stinks. The hoses still feel pretty pliable, so that's a bonus. And the wiring looks to still be in good shape. So yeah, I don't. I don't think there's any issue at all going on here. Uh, I'm going to change out this filter, of course, though. It's a good thing this isn't like smell-o-vision, because you would be like, oh lord, what are you doing? So if you remember from my last video, I like to stretch these back, see if any, any splits open up. They are not. I would say these are definitely good for continued use. This one's a little bit far on there, but uh, I guess that's not a big deal. And uh, sometimes you can, you can reuse these Oedeker clamps if you've got the right, the right tools. But in this case, I will I'll go ahead and replace them anyway. You can find these on my Amazon page. Arrows pointing away from the pump. I do like to put the date. So that's a date code right there. You see it was made uh, in 22, 3, 3 of 22. I like to just uh, make sure that is facing out for the next guy if, um, if I'm not the guy that changes it out or even if I am I like to see when I did it last okay. these are Oedeker clamp players actually Oedeker brand you can't really see it because it's dirty but anyways Amazon page if you're looking for the players. If not, you can just use a, a nipper. If you got like a, a tile nipper, that'll work too. I like to give these a twist. Just make sure that the, the clamps are indeed tight and they are in this case so go ahead and put this back on
the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this bike starts and runs before I proceed further just in case there is a an issue with the fuel pump after sitting that long I want to make sure that uh, you know I don't go buttoning things back up or anything prior to getting this thing started so I'm going to just uh, go ahead and reinstall the gas tank temporarily and make sure it starts and runs So here's something of note. Look at how loose this thing is. That was on its way to breakage for sure. That's that's really bad. That's why that thing was so so much movement there. Guys, make sure you service these things. Kill the robot. Keep it going deep in my soul. You keep it going. Just a quick note on when you're putting on your panels on these LTs on the back side here this uh, this little tab right here if this little tab is folded underneath it doesn't sit right on there so either fold it out or just break it off it, don't worry about it So just a few more things to tidy up on here, and this thing's going to be ready to clean up anyway. Then it'll be ready to go. But um, yeah, I'll bring it back in a little bit with uh, some other details. Just finishing up this bike. Oh yeah, there it is. That's the one that's important, right? Yeah, that looks pretty good. it looks really good because it's a reflective sticker all right beautiful and then I got one more that's right this is in honor of all the gremlins I killed 
on this motorcycle. I killed them all. So I'm putting Stripe on there. This bike is named Stripe. My wife named this one. Not just because it's got a the blue stripe there, but well. I told her about some of the gremlins and she's like, yeah, that that sounds like stripe. She's like, what was the name of that uh, that one that one gremlin, you know, from from that movie? I said, oh, that was stripe. Oh, there we go. Of course, there's got to be some bubbles in there. Perfect. I think that's even reflective too. So it's got a couple other uh, decals already on it. It's got this one up here, the cross with uh, made out of bullets and guns. I like that one. That one's cool. And it's got the uh, I aim to misbehave on the back there. You can't really see it too well because of the reflection, but oh, there you go. Now you can see it. So, this bike is now done and it is for sale. I will take this one outside uh, on a sunnier day and do a final video of, and a summary too, of all the uh, things that I did on this bike. And if you're interested in this bike, by all means do put a, uh, either a comment down in the description below or better yet, contact me at kirksmotorrod.com and we can talk about you coming out here to buy this bike. This one is ready to go. One of the things it has on there is brand new tires. So, uh, and, a, and a different windshield. I, I put a taller windshield on it. That, that other windshield was in kind of poor shape and it wasn't really all that functional with the uh, being a short windshield. But of course you can change out whatever windshield you want. But uh, yeah, I think it looks good, runs good, it is good. Talk to you in the next one.